What up my freaks, Ruana Sunsight here with part 14 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Carl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, Carl attacked the Brass Keep, the seat of the Fecundites, and though Festus was not there having been defeated by Carl earlier on the road to the Brass Keep, it was still an absolute grind as our great swords fought over the walls and took a massive damage fighting the Chaos Warriors and then the Chaos Knights below the walls afterwards. Still, we did come out ahead, though Carl's army is now pretty badly damaged, and I did ask you guys what your thoughts were on whether we should try to farm arm Festus or just take him out right now so that we don't have to deal with him and then proceed southward towards Sylvania. The consensus, pretty much everybody agreed, was that we take Festus out and we give the uh, territory back to uh, to Hawkland as long as we get Karl Franz a little bit of healing because while well, he's in pretty dire shape and the uh, attrition is pretty bad here as well and the plagues are probably not helping matters either. On the bright side though, Karl does have full movement so Unless I'm mistaken, we can return the uh, we can return the keep to Auckland and still heal up because this will be our friendly territory. And then on top of it, yeah, we can go Empire and camp right here. Yes. The the, uh, the healing isn't anything crazy, but there we go. Fecundites are now destroyed, and these guys are at nine fealty right away. That's quite nice as well. Uh, so what we'll want to do, I guess, is we'll want to move Carl past all of these attrition -y territories. So we'll move him here via encamp, and then we'll see if we can't do like a march stance all the way from here to Talabayim, because if we can skip through Ergeg where all this, this uh, Nurgle corruption is, we can land in friendly territory and then hopefully start healing just by regular movement rather than encamp. Still, um, we should have, let's see, six turns until replenished. Well, let's say we take three or four turns to get to Sylvania. We won't be fully healed, but I think we'll be good enough to fight them. And then maybe if we take a, a territory and not give it to our allies immediately, or we could heal up to full afterwards. Alrighty, plan is made to some degree. Now, there are many other things that we gotta do. First of all, let's start with diplomacy here. I believe I saw, yes, correct, Kadrin, you want to do a non-aggression pact. And you know what? While we're at it... Now let's get even friendlier. I don't like the fact that you don't like us as much as you should. So let's go with join war against the Bone Rattlers. It's pretty much inevitable that we have to fight the Bone Rattlers. And we can get 3k by the looks of it out of this. And the Bone Rattlers are currently fighting the Ice Court, who will like us even more. And by virtue of uh, our fighting these guys. Will they eventually cross through the Empire to go towards us? It's very possible that they will, as the AI likes doing that sort of thing. Um, but I'm willing to take the risk. So, there we go. All right. We will join the war, and this I'm sure will make the other Dwarfen factions like us more as well, so, and that's fine. Alrighty, now, any more diplomacy that we need to do? Now everybody else looks pretty uh, negative about things, though I did want to double check one thing. So the Empire, we're currently trading with every single province but Ostermark, which means I think we can do an Imperial Machination and get more money out of Ostermark. Uh, where are we here? I, was, I wasn't going to do this earlier because I... Felt like Ostromark would not survive because it would get destroyed by Draka because Beckhoffen stands alone, but they do seem to still be alive, so why not? Let's establish the trade. And there we go. Can't increase fealty right now, but we are trying to save up anyway. And ah, these guys are damaged as well. You keep guarding it there, buddy. Keep guarding it. Don't uh, don't lose to Draka suddenly. All right, next up, what do we have here? Uh, we want to get this recruiter over to Marienburg. Covering ground. Like so, wherein we will build the Marienburg port and a dam. 5.1k, or nearly 5.2. Quite expensive, and that's with all the reductions, but what can you do? It is something that we need to make, and I guess we'll upgrade the die maker as well. Now, I guess the question here is going to be, do we go for the farm, do we go for the toll roads, or do we go for... Hmm, I do like the income from all buildings, all adjacent provinces, but it'll probably give us less income overall than the, uh, and then the Tailor's Guild would. On the other hand, the garrison here is kind of weak. I don't like that, because if scaling or other factions sail down here again, we're really going to need an ability to defend the place. And granted, we could build the basic walls here. On the other hand, if we do continue keeping an army at Fort Bray, they could always move down to Marienburg to protect it as well. 
Unless we get attacked by both places at once, of course, in which case, yeah, problem. Hmm. How much? This gives us four growth. 40, rather. This gives us 10, but it also is beneficial to other nearby provinces, and we will probably want to build these in pretty much every capital anyway. But I think for now we'll go for the fields. We'll delete it and replace it with a toll road afterwards. Yeah, we'll just need to upgrade all these defensive structures. Alrighty, recruiter, you can go back to where you came from. Although, hmm, you know what? Go here. Orders heated. And just to increase the income, I think we'll try to upgrade Fort Burg Bray next turn. Maybe it would be nice to be able to do it. So let's go cancel the Burgomeisters for you, at least temporarily. Uh, Helmgard, you are back into state troop levy, which is fine. We also want to continue recruiting our army. As in, we're getting that full stack up for Wolfram while he's going to ferry stuff back over to Carl. So in that light, let's give him, let's say, two Outriders with grenade launchers. Expensive, but useful. And then we'll give him a mortar. Maybe two mortars. Like so. He'll probably need at least a couple more spears or a couple more halberds. We could do halberds just for fun. Maybe. Let's see. I'm trying to calculate uh, how many troops we have a room for. We need to leave enough room when transferring. Well, first of all, we need to leave one for Imperial Foot, and then we'll need one room for Reichsguard, which is here. And... Th Wait, what? Why does this take three to... Oh, because you're here. Okay, I see. I see how it is. Uh, yeah, we'll do that, Reichsguard. Because that's going to Carl, together with you, the Borderman, together with the Imperial Foot, and together with the, uh, not the handgunners, but the Silver Bullets, which are handgunners, I guess. Alright, fine, let's get two more Halberdiers, and then we have room for one more spot. Wait, actually, no, we don't, because it would get replaced by Imperial Foot. So that's it. Hmm. Is seven units of melee enough? Maybe. Maybe it is. Also depends on if we put the Sons of Sigmar in here or not. We could always also do one less free company militia. And then that would allow us to put another handgunner unit in here. I would like at least one handgunner unit. And then, yeah, we have the Outriders in here and we'll have the crossbows. But just to target stuff that really needs the extra armor piercing. Plus the combination with shield breaker is quite useful as well. All right, fine. I think we'll take one handgunner unit as well. Oh, this will take another turn, though. Which is a shame. But I don't see that there's anything we can do about it. Damn, it's going to cost a lot of money. But it is what it is. Alrighty. Uh, we'll leave one of the uh, Free Company Militia behind. We were going to transfer these things over to a few other uh, a few other lords. We can also cancel some of the recruitment here if we need money next turn. Which we very well might to upgrade Fort Bird Bray. And we shall see. Because we are getting uh, we are getting more money before this has to be on the field, and oh, we need 2.5k to immediately get you as well. But at least we should have a nice stack fairly early here. Alrighty, now you, research. We are definitely going to go towards. There's two things that we really want. Utilize wizard apprentices gives us the casualty replenishment rate, which is just super useful everywhere. And the other super useful thing is the continuous production through Engineers Guild, which gives us both money through industry, extra research, which reduces at least a turn or two on various things, and then even more money from industry and then income. 23 turns is freaking long as hell, though. Hey. You know, I do want the uh, Wizard Apprentices, but I feel like this is probably the better way to go. Just out of curiosity, how much money do settlement buildings generate right now? Actually, not so bad. 150 and then 300 for Altdorf. What about a regular main settlement? Uh, 150 as well. So yeah, nothing crazy. You know, and I think this is the way that we're going to... Uh, this is the way that we're going to go. Next up, Gregor. You are going to move to Montfort, where you will heal up a little bit, and then you will head to Karak Ziflin next turn. Hopefully, Durthu won't have taken it. But one of the reasons that I really love uh, allying with the Wood Elves is, well, 
Love is maybe a strong word, but uh, <laughs> uh, I do like allying with the Wood Elves is because they don't particularly value their uh, their outposts. They're relatively cheap to buy from them because they can't upgrade them past tier one, which makes them a better ally when they're near you because you can always buy their stuff off of them. And on top of that, I hate going into Athaloran because it's all useless garbage territory and it's hard to hold and it's hard to develop and you suffer attrition in Athaloran and I don't want... <laughs> I don't want to deal with it, so we'll leave it alone. I also noticed there's an Infectique here. Hmm. I don't particularly like that. How much would it cost for you to join your, our war against the Skaven? Against Clan Scryer? Minus 14. How much do you want for Castle Bastun? How much would you give us, rather? 21. Alright, you know what? Maybe this is the way we do it. If we take you... And we cross you. Oh, damn. Could you cross this, I wonder? In one turn? Kind of hard to say. If you can't, it'll be a trespass, which is not so great. But we do probably want to get you to Blackstone Post ASAP. We also don't want to risk March Stance because this guy might attack you then. And we could also move directly into Castle Bastun or close to this and then cross next turn, but then. Hmm. But I really like the idea of forcing Infectic into a war with uh, with Lewin here. Granted, he'd probably lose this army, but you know, I don't really care about Lewin, to be perfectly honest, either. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna risk this. You're gonna go here, and we're, we're gonna see. If he can cross the border into Montfort, then we're good, and if he can't, well, we can't. Although we could risk this. You know what? Maybe we risk it. Maybe we go into March Stance and risk this. This guy can't reach us. Oh, actually, he might be able to reach us here. Mm. Okay, screw it. Do this. See if you can cross. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nah, no dice. No dice. Oh, well. I guess we'll cross it next turn, then. I wonder, wait, how much would no trespassing cost? Oh, too much. Way, 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 way too much. Alright, we'll give him Castle Bastun anyway, and we'll still probably transfer it to Infectic. He's not actually a threat to anything. His army is too weak. It's a bunch of clan rats. I don't see him actually being able to take anything here. Really, he can't take anything here. Maybe he can threaten Grunberg a little bit, but A, it's too far away, and B, we've got armies near it. I don't see the issue. Yeah, it's fine. Alrighty, that's decided. Recruiter, you're good where you are. Wolfram, you have to stay where you are for now as well. We have no buildings to build, and I guess we're going next turn. Alright, uh, do you still need state troop levy? Yeah, I guess you do, so Peter can uh, cross to uh, Monfort next turn. Alrighty, Lord not moved, unassigned skill points, outpost upgrade available, not something we're willing to pay for right now. And uh, Let's go next turn. I'm just checking if anybody can get attacked, but I don't think so. I doubt it. Alrighty, where did the Skaven go? I can't see them anymore, which I guess is a little bit unfortunate. I wonder if they jumped over here. Well, I guess Recruiter is nearby, so we could always, uh, could always move to Marienburg if he needs to. Ah, oh, what do we have here? Uh, Wilhelm Lichberg, you're gonna attack Fortberg Bray. Alright, you go for it, buddy. Uh, give us free money. Oh! Wait, he skipped Zisoro, and they are at war. He skipped over this. <laughs> to attack Fort Bray, you gotta be kidding me. Ugh, oh, AI. And he, he had to walk through this place to go for us. <laughs> and he probably could have taken this easily, too. Uh, do you obey the gods? What is this? I obey. Unhappy pop yourself for the love of... That's, uh, that's quite a bit of control loss. But considering we don't have a lot of territories, we're relatively safe in that regard, so I guess we obey. Man, this better give us a good buff at some point. Ah, what do we have here? Uh, Confederation offered from Hawkland. Well, that's just swell. We gave them Brass Keep and they're like, we love you so much, we'll confederate. I'm gonna give this a quick read again, because I like the little bits of lore about the uh, individual Empire provinces, but we're going to assert independence and go for Imperial Authority again. So, great strides have been made. Okay, this part is always the same. Their Elector Count, Aldebrand Ludenhoff, has approached you with an offer of confederation. Hawkland's feudal lands are wedged between the middle 
Eagle Mountains to the north and the River Talabek to the south. Hawklanders have developed a tolerance for foreigners that is considered unusual due to being a crossroads for the northern and eastern states. Will you accept a Hawkland's offer of confederation? Wow, that's not a lot of information about Hawkland. Come on now. Talk about their long rifles or something. Anyway, certain dependence. We're up at eight. We're getting there, almost to that Imperial Authority dominance that we've been eyeing for so long. Now, uh, oh. Huh. And Durtha ran away. I was uh, hoping for some help. What do we have here? Hmm. Well, you can cross and siege it, is what you can do, even if we don't have Durthu's help. This is our territory, yes? Yeah, all right. So, you're gonna go here. Like so. We are going to give you the standard of discipline to, let's say, the Death Jacks, probably, because they're our most important or most valid. And you know what? No, they're not on the front lines. We'll give it to you. The problem if we fight here is obviously going to be the, uh, is going to be the Cairn Wraiths. We have no magical damage. In fact, if, is, if we could just give a magical damage item to at least one unit. Do we have a Lichbone Pennant on anybody? E no, we don't. Damn. I do in several of my other campaigns, so I was hoping for a Lichbone Pennant, but alas. We can give you the Grave Robber in case you fight here. Scarecrow Banner, Banner of Swiftness, I know this is probably going to be all that helpful. I guess we could give a Ranger Standard to you personally, but I also don't see that helping very much. Uh, Dragon Tooth does have magical attacks, though. We could temporarily take it from Carl and give it to you. Hmm. Is this actually transferable? Actually, I'm just curious, is this transferable? Uh, currently assigned to Emperor Call Franz, yes, transfer item. Wait, is there another magical item, magical damage, dealing, sword or something? No, there is not. This is also going to be quite useless for this army, generally speaking, but Carl's not going to fight for the next few turns, most likely, so. Transfer this. Now you're the, the <laughs> now you're the Elector Count, I guess. Alrighty. I'm glad that it is transferable. At least we have one unit that could hurt oh, no, those no, no. Uh, and those Cairn rates, and we'll use you for that purpose. Gregor, you're going to hit Karak Ziflin. The and then if these guys don't sally out, we'll move you to help. Uh, let, oh, really? We're going to have to manually fight this? Well, isn't that a shame? Uh, I wonder if Signal we could... With us. Hmm. Well, there's no purpose in sieging it. Also, wait, before I forget, you are going to get an upgrade. Although, no, we don't have the money now. Because you need to immediately get the cooldown on the Imperial Foot. Which costs 2.5k. Damn, it's expensive. But oh well. You're going to get these guys immediately. Got to reset that cooldown. And then, when's the next cooldown down? I can't see. Okay, well, you. Champion of the Faith. Double check the six turns. Okay, we got to make sure that we have enough money for them. Uh, we got a few more turns until this is all ready to go. Carl, uh, let's move you southward. Can you march stance through these territories? Yes, just barely. Very nice. Get the heck out of there. Oh, and you don't have a plague right now either. This is perfect. <laughs> Get out of these plague-ridden lands and heal up in friendly territory. Beautiful. To Kruden Krugenheim, rather, we go. All right. That looks good to me. Next up, what do we have? Uh, Carl is good recruiter, if you cannot afford this, and... Oh, we can, it costs 8k. Alright, fine, you're gonna go here. Like so. I really wonder where those Skaven went. Uh, let's have you upgrade this to a Grand Fort and take all the money. Although that means we won't be able to upgrade the Tailor's Guild here. Which we would probably like to do. Keep the pace! Hmm. What's the cost here? 1340. If we fight this, maybe we'll get enough money for it. Uh, I guess we could quick fight this, because we can't auto-resolve because we kill our swordsmen. Alright, alright, let's do this manually super quick. And the enemies here shouldn't be any kind of threat. So I'll just play this at max speed, but I obviously don't want to lose the uh, uh, portions of the army just for this. Gotta be careful about the Vampires, I guess, but we have massive range superiority, so not a concern. And I guess the Dire Doggos, they can also do damage. Alrighty, so let's just blob up nicely. We also have the Arch Elector to do most of the damage if we wanted to. Alrighty, uh, you, out front. 
And out front like so, doesn't really matter, you guys directly behind them, turn off skirmish mode. Uh, we can stagger you slightly so that you don't attack the same units, the enemy has probably no spells that we're wary of. Nope, nothing that we are concerned about, so let's get the damaged units on the flanks, together with our units of free company militia like so, to protect the doggos. Like that, and like that. And like that. Alright, good enough for me. Let's turn off skirmish mode and start battle. Everybody but the Arch Elector can be grouped too. The enemy is moving forward. Let's move like this very slightly. Adjust. Arch Elector, get ready to move and fight that, uh, fight that vampire. Alright. And, okay, you guys, focus on those bats. You guys, focus on those doggos. Don't let them charge our crossbows. Are they really gonna go for our Arch Elector? Are you crazy? Nope, they're gonna go for... I actually can't tell who they're going for. You guys switch from the bats to the vampire. You guys fight. Alright, doggos are nearly done for. And you guys can target the graveguard with great weapons, because they're not as resistant. Oh, lovely. And you, buff and buff. Don't pop the Grand Soul Fire, right? Yep. You guys target the other graveguard unit. You can move in and help against the vampire. Alright, battle should be over quite soon. Alright, you guys get ready to shoot the uh, shoot the graveyard in the back slash the sides. Good, looks good. How's that vampire looking? Should be done for shortly. Tiny bits of damage on you. At least we can watch the rest of this. Nice little semi-duel here. And we gotta react to the graveyard, I guess. You move here. Uh, you move here. The vampire should be done for shortly. Oh, that was a nice leap animation, though. I like that. And down you go. Actually got gunned down by a free company by the looks of it. Alright, Arch Elector forward, get ready for Grand Soul Fire. You guys get ready to hit these guys in this side. You move, advance, and then target the Skeleton Warriors back here. Arch Elector, Soul Fire. You guys fire into the backs. And you guys get ready to charge into the back, and we should be good. There's the Soul Fire. The Graveguard are pretty much done. I really like the Barrow Legion's uh, color scheme, though. I think it might be my favorite Undead Colors game. Alrighty, down go all those poor skellies. I don't know why the Auto Resolve decided that this particular battle was going to uh, cause us to lose units. Kind of ridiculous. There we go. Okay, stop gunning down your friends, guys. Come on. <laughs> Only when necessary. Yeah, 27 losses, and we could have reduced that further if we tried a little bit harder, but no. Uh, yeah, we could have actually probably killed the entire enemy army with the Arch Elector alone, though he obviously would have taken a little bit more damage. And just pop the Grand Soul Fire on uh, piles of enemies. Really, it was only the, uh, the Vampirus that was a threat to him, and yeah, technically the Great Swords with Great Weapons can certainly hurt him. It's just the Grand Soul Fire when they're all blobbed up would have killed them all anyway. Alright, we got hey, we got a free Lux Stone for it. Would have been amazing if we got a free magical damage dealing thing. Uh, good, and then we'll occupy Zifflin for ourselves, including... No, oh, casualties captured post-battle as well. Uh, including the dies. Now, if these guys don't attack Peter next turn, we'll simply move in to reinforce and continue the siege for a little while. You can also do this. Like so. We may need to manually do a siege, we'll see. But still, that looks good to me. Now, the thing that we wanted to move you, no, the reason, rather, that we wanted to move you away was to trade Castle Best Stun back to Bordelow. Now, you guys may be wondering why I don't march directly towards uh, Bordelow, which is an extremely valuable port. It has wine, it has the uh, Bordelow Vineyards special building, and the Bordelow Port, which is kind of like the Marienburg Port and the, uh, or Marienburg Port and the Erengrad Port, which generate extra trade goods and make a lot of money. However, a, it's a blood ground, so we'd need to burn out the Beastmen first, which are, by the looks of it, directly behind Akatane in Bastun, which would put any army moving here in quite a lot of danger, so we can't take this yet. On top of that, moving here would probably reveal the enemy, and as we can see, there is Slaneshi corruption here, which means Nakari's still alive, which would essentially put us into direct conflict with Nakari immediately. We can leave Luwin to deal with that. It also may very well happen that if... Uh, uh, if the Vanaheimlings, assuming they're still alive, and uh, Bellacor, 
are attacking the elves, and they have in pretty much every campaign that I've seen, and they would be up here as well, and we could get into a war with them, and they would immediately then start sailing down to Arnau and Gorsel, and I'd really rather not have to deal with those guys right now either. So, we are going to leave these territories to Lewin. If he loses them, we'll retake them. If he keeps them, well, he'll be a good friend for us in the future. So, you can have Castle Beston, and we are going to... Oh, you're willing to go non-aggression now. Wait, what about join war against Scryer? Oh, you're actually quite willing to do that. How much money would you give us? 16 versus... Ah, same amount. Well, that's just lovely. Uh, no military access, eh? Not yet, anyway. You know what? That works for me. It quite works. And now we're moving towards plus 50. Alrighty. It looks like we may, in fact, avoid war with Lewin. At your service. I want a trade agreement with Krakujin. Oh, hello, if it isn't a defensive alliance with Durthu. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll keep nice and friendly with Durthu. Plus, the great thing about getting uh, Durthu as an ally, other than the fact that we'll buy territories off him later, is the fact that he'll give us vision of all these territories. Uh, this, uh, it's very hectic in Bretonia, it has been for this entire campaign, but it is nice to see the enemies on the approach to our forts, rather than waiting for them to attack, especially as we'll need to try to hold Karak Ziflin now as well. Actually, speaking of Ziflin, don't collect the income, go immediately for the fields rather than the dyes. We'll need to upgrade this to have a wall as fast as possible. And most likely, with Helmgard upgraded to tier 3, we'll need to keep this army in Ziflin, and possibly this army in the Blackstone Post, rather than, uh, rather than down there. We may actually want to make the Blackstone Post a military-centric province, uh, just so that it can uh, serve as a staging ground for these armies, should they need to move down here and actually get into further fights. Alrighty, that's decided. Next up, Wolfram, and actually I believe everybody's good, other than potential buildings. Uh, Bastun is ready for building in Monfort, but I think we can't do this right now. Because we want to give you Monfort, because we can't hold it, or at least we don't want to. But I want to trade it for military access, and possibly a lot of money. We'll wait a turn. It doesn't look like there's anybody nearby enough to take it right now. Which means it'll be more valuable when uh, Lewin has more money to give us, and hopefully that, uh, uh, hopefully that military access, because we'd have to constantly transfer or travel through his territory otherwise. And I want to piss him off, because by pissing him off, we may also piss off other nearby territories. Anyway, Marienburg. No, wait, Reichland, rather. You are going to upgrade the Tailor's Guild. And we, ah, uh, we're a little bit short of upgrading the farm here. 900. And I don't think we can acquire the money any other way right now. Wait, peace? No. You called? Also, before I forget, do we have any missions? And we do not defeat Vlad while we're working on it. Oh, right, we also will want to build a... Uh, uh, we'll want to build an outpost here, but not in the Waterfall Palace, because by the looks of it, somebody else already has one. Damn you, Torgavana, they just, ne just recently built it, too. Oh well. Alright, skip the rest of this, unassigned skill points, we'll build the farm next turn. You can stay... Make a tiny bit more money by staying in, uh, in this place, so we'll stay here, I guess. You know what, you can move closer to Aelhard. I'm a little bit wary of where those Skaven went exactly. I'd rather not risk it. I don't see them, but they could be like right here and then they could jump. Well, then they're no threat, but either way. Let's end the turn. Alrighty, population surplus at 3 in Reichland, Reichland rather, moving towards tier 4 and then access to Hellstorm rocket batteries and a few other fancy things that we've been looking forward to. Alright, Shadow gave... Oh, yes, we could also try to declare war on Morgur and thereby acquire a defensive alliance with Talzin as well. It would be nice. Honestly, if the Wood Elves just take over Bretonia, we can just buy it off them later, too. Uh, let's see. Ah, Infectic. You're nearby now. But it looks like Bastun is at least to some degree defended. Wait, these guys have a weaving house as well? It's the exact same building? Alright, it so feels a little bit lazy, but sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but nonetheless. Uh, Gregor, are you able to move into this territory and not suffer tr Yes, you are. All right, you're gonna go to Blackstone Post. In a little bit of danger because... Somebody could attack us here, but it looks okay. Is Durthu still alive? I don't see him. His army might have been destroyed by, uh... 
by Morger. And what is this? Ogonag is a pestilent scheme priest. Yeah, okay, well at least he's going for the elves and not for us. Speaking of the elves, let's double check that diplomacy again. Vidriov is nearly ready for a, for a uh, non-aggression. They're going more positive. I wonder if we could get them to join a war against any, anybody. Uh, military access with Paravon. Defensive alliance with Paravon. Durther, you appear to have a mission for us. Boilrin. Very good chance he goes for Fort Burbray, so... If he's gonna go for Fort Burbray, let's go accept mission to attack Boilrin. And... yeah, a little bit diplomacy heavy this episode, or admin heavy in general, but sometimes it happens. Uh, Vidrioth. Hmm... Do we want to pay you for this? 2k? I don't think so. Are you at war with any- ooh, would, it, would you join war against somebody? Ah, for free, yes. Bone Rattlers, for free, yes. Crooked Moon, for free, yes. <laughs> Broken X, not for free. Okay, way too expensive. Ah, it would actually be ideal if you fought them, but okay. Skaven, for free. They really are afraid of Broken X. Clan Molder, not for free. Sylvania. I guess they only want to join factions that are weak and yet that they hate. Yeah, see, they're joining against the nearly dead factions like Clan Verms. Alright, that's fine. I'll do this. Just and that should make them weak enough for us to go for a non-aggression pact. Beautiful. Alright, while we're at it, if we're doing that... Hey, look, Carcassonne is now ready for a non-aggression as well. Uh, would you want to join war against... Nah, you know what? That'll just make them weaker. Let's, uh, let's not risk it. Let's just go non-aggression. More importantly, if Vidrioth was willing to do that, we should really talk to Torgavan and Talzin and so, and just in case. Bone Rattlers? They're, oh, wow, okay, you don't want to do that. And you don't want to do that. And you really don't want to do that. Alright, Durthu, you're next. Argolon, join war against. Bone Rattlers? 0.7, not paying. 4.6, no. Verms? 0.2. Alright, maybe we'll pay for that later, but uh, for now, it's fine. Our relationship is quite positive. Next up, Talzin, or last, I suppose. Join war against... Barrel Legion, free. Bone Rattlers, not free. Clan Molder. Barrel Legion's about to die, but we'll still get the uh, rep bonus for, uh, for attacking them. I think we don't want a military alliance with the Wood Elves, though. Just a, a defensive alliance, because they are uh, likely to declare war on random factions. Like, this guy's fighting Telia right now. Even though I would like for the Telian provinces ourselves. Well, if he manages to take them, we'll pie them off him. Uh, Alright. And then Paravon, you don't dislike these guys, right? They're all fine with you? Yeah, alright. Paravon, military axes. No defensive alliance for you, because frankly, I don't see Paravon surviving. But who knows? Alrighty, some nice diplomacy. Our predicted income has dropped fairly considerable. What the heck is this? Peter Grigorovich. Why are you here? You're gonna go for Grunberg, which is our weakest current settlement. Well, aren't you clever? Around all the way around, huh? I don't like you. Uh, <laughs> we could move you, Wolfram, to Grunberg if we wanted to. We could also summon a different lord. There's a cunning arch lector, which might be nice. And there's also Nude Van Hesselt, but he's going to lead our third army, our... Uh, our first knightly army, so we'll be taking some time with him. Ugh, if only this could have been done in one turn rather than two. Would have been swell. Hmm. I'm just looking if we could have done anything here via... Global recruitment, but now we'll take an extra turn, I guess. Alright, that's fine. Wolfram, you're gonna go to Grunberg. I don't think you're afraid of uh, Peter by himself. We're also going to have to give you items as well, and just before fighting, and also just in case. Carl, to, Kr to Krugenheim you go. And... Okay, maybe right here. Does this place have defenses? Yeah, some. Ooh! Oh, well, well, well! If it isn't Vlad himself. Uh, we're still pretty hurt, though. Hmm, okay, we gotta be careful here. He could actually maybe attack us with both armies while we're in March stance, but Krugenheim is here to add some defenders to us, so I think we'll be fine, even hurt as we are. Let's get military heritage for you. Just keep going through this. 
even though the extra missile defense chance isn't going to be all that helpful against uh, Vlad's armies in particular. You can have Comet of Cassandora, mostly because I really don't like Chain Lightning, because it just moves, uh, but uh, we'll go for Arcane Conduit next. All right, what's your mana? You actually have some mana this time around. That's nice as well. All righty. Next up, I guess you can continue the siege for a while, eh? Oh, we're actually on Pyrrhic victory now. This is what we've trained for. Yeah, they couldn't keep doing this. And did we already check Monfort and possibly trading you it to you again? 18, eh, still not to military access. All right, but it's still unreachable by anybody. Yeah, it still looks okay. Actually, just out of curiosity, if we give you Monfort, 2.5k. It's still probably worth it to give it to uh, Bretonia instead, and just so that we don't have to deal with them. Anyway, Recruiter is good, Peter is good, I don't believe there's any buildings to build unless I'm mistaken. Nope, I am mistaken. Huntsman you, General. go to Marienburg, and build up that farm. And there we go, at reduced price of course, and in fact next turn you're going to build the town here as well, Huntsman which is General. good. Alright, Altdorf is fine as it is, and has no other buildings to build, but it is an Imperial Taxation already. Oh, I can't wait to use these frickin' Outriders with grenade launchers. They're just so damn fun. <laughs> and a great unit, too. Uh, skip this outpost available. That's Durthu's territory. I guess we could really build one in Paravon if we wanted to. It is a special location for these guys. It gives them the uh, Hawk Rider bonuses. Oh, and frickin' Hawk Riders. Yeah, one of the things I regret about my Draika camp... Well, not so much regret, but uh, I miss about my Draika campaign. SFO makes Hawk Riders ridiculously good, and they're kind of garbage in uh, vanilla. I mean, not garbage, but not great. As in, they're more like just slightly more powerful Great Hawks. You can pretty much ignore their missile strength, but in SFO, in my old, old Durthu campaign, I had an army with basically a ton of these guys just flying around, ripping everything apart from the air. They were obnoxiously good. And it makes me miss it. Oh, in the future. Uh, yeah, let's let's build the let's build the post here then. Lady of the Is it two thousand gold though right now? That's oh, two thousand. Okay, you know what? Maybe we'll wait on it. I don't want to spend the two k. Alrighty, let's go next then. We gotta get this fight with Vlad going before we run out of time here. Hopefully he just straight up attacks us while we're in March stands. Well, Ice Court, what you want? You want us to join war against Draka? Not right now. Maybe in the future, but we're too close to Vlad and we gotta capitalize on it. Scryer and Mulder have moved. We haven't been attacked anywhere and I don't see that trespassing warning thing. Whoa, 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 what? Where did he go? Okay, wait, wait, no, what? He's here. Hmm. He's trying to draw us into a fight in the woods. I guess makes sense, because we won't be able to get as effective uh, units, but it does look like we found our fight. A clash of emperors. Ah, Pervon destroyed. A brutal business. Oh, damn. It's actually not so great for us. His weaker units will be considerably strengthened because of this. Look at those dire wolves. 50 weapon strength. That's insane. And definitely buffs a few units to scary proportions. A few basic units, I mean. At least scary even to our great swords. Just out of curiosity. Okay, you are not going to attack? Coward. Alright, well. We could leave you here and ignore you, or we could just have Bernhardt move to Wolfram anyway. Yes! And how are we doing here? Oh, oh, oh my. There's a second Skaven army. I kinda don't like that, and they're going here. They might actually try to jump over this. Hmm, but we can't reach them. Also, I do wonder. Do you wish the lady's favor? Very close to that military axe. I think one more turn and then he'll be willing to do it. Alrighty, well, regardless of all that, we can ignore it for now. It's time to hit Vlad. Where are you, Vlad? Alright, looks like a pretty fun battle. Vlad is in raiding stance, foolishly, but uh, I can't believe they got a brutal business. It's actually going to help the Skaven quite a lot as well. And it looks like he's willing to fight a close victory. And we do have to worry about the fact that we are in light, quote-unquote, forest. And we do also have to worry about all their basic units being much, much stronger. Nonetheless, looks like a fun fight. Here we go. Kill them. And if they get back up, kill 
Alrighty, did somebody just say kill them? I'm not entirely sure that's going to help that much, and because they're already dead. Uh, and look at Carl on Deathclaw with the uh, with the sliding. Pretty great. It's a it's a very a lovely uh, a lovely shot and some lovely lighting for him to be fighting Vlad on with the sun at his back, the vampires having to attack into the light. This actually feels like a loreful sort of setup for a battle and uh, the light shining down would actually defi or would definitely be a detriment to the dead, though of course in lore the vampires would also be casting various spells to make sure that the clouds cover all that light, though of course if we had warrior priests among us or something like that they may be able to counter at that. I also like how our side is the light side and their side is much darker. Huh. I wonder if this is on purpose, because if it is, absolutely fantastically done, if not a complete coincidence. Also, this completely, completely random, but this does remind me, I also can't wait until we can get our uh, fire while moving army. I'm really excited to build it, because I've never built an army like this before for the Empire, and that by that I mean the army with the huntsmen and the, uh, the war wagons, pistoliers, and the uh, free companies. Just an army that every single unit can fire while moving. Seems like it'll be pretty good, well, at least okay, until from early to mid-game, and fairly cheap, because all those units are very uh, low tier and uh, inexpensive. And on top of that, we can throw in some uh, some regiments of renown, or not regiments of renown, well, actually, the Sterling's Revenge, but uh, we can throw in the Nordland Mariners to buff it up with uh, even more powerful... Uh, uh, free company. But anyway, I digress. That is up ahead. Fortunately for us, in terms of this battle, we've got ourselves a very nice hill that the enemy looks to be allowing us to get to, as in they're not going to attack us immediately, but are allowing us to set up. Granted, we deployed basically on top of the hill anyway, so we only had to move slightly forward, but the enemy might have been able to charge us and at least interrupt us to some degree. And this is going to allow us to get us some damage out of our mortars at the very least. Though of course we could do a lot more if we had our uh, if we had our hellstorms, but we will sooner rather than later. Alrighty, well, the mortars can do damage. We're obviously going to be ignoring the zombies with them. Gonna go a little bit for the uh, skeletons for now. But as soon as the enemy army starts moving, we're actually going to switch the mortars to the uh, Graveguard. The reason I'm doing this is because the Graveguard are uh, very heavily armored as compared to the, uh, to the regular skeleton swords. And thus, they would take a lot less damage from the mortars landing among them. Uh, but once the enemy starts moving, the mortars are A, unlikely to hit, and B, the enemy likes to dance away from artillery pieces. So this would essentially keep the Graveguard from advancing towards us nearly as quickly as the rest of the army. Or at least that's the plan. We'll see if it works out. In the meantime, it looks like the enemy doesn't want to move forward as yet. So at the same time, we're going to be starting to gun down the enemy Graveguard with our units of handgunners. Still, a very nice hill. This is definitely reminding me of the Ikat campaign, but it's a pretty ideal setup for us. Ooh, what the heck is that effect? And I don't mean the Storm of the Night here, this little uh, breath attack here, or breath effect here. Well, either way, we have uh, the Storm of the Night on us, so the enemy does have a uh, aerial advantage. It's a vortex effect that does damage to flying units, though fortunately Carl Franz uh, does have his, uh, his healing via his healing potion. And also he does have fire support via the gunners, who will be shooting at the vamps who are flying around in the air and have already taken some damage from Emmanuel Posner, though she's popping a healing potion and the blood chalice of Bathory from Isabella herself. Damn. That's going to be a lot of HP brought back. The enemy has also used the Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma on our unit of Imperial Foot, who, as we can see, lost an absolute ton of HP for that. It might be in combination with some other effect, as I doubt the... I doubt Melkoth's alone would do this much damage to this unit. Probably that breath hit them as well or something. Not entirely sure. Anyway, Vlad wanted to fight with Emmanuel in the air, but it looks like she's going to land and try to go after our wizard. Oh, that's just fine, because Vlad can land and fight together with his Imperial foot, surrounding and killing the enemy vampire. You gotta love the effect for the Storm of the Night, though. It's, uh, it's quite nice. 
Alrighty, though the Imperial Foot are a little bit in the way, Deathclaw's having a little bit of a difficult time in getting through. In the meantime, the rest of the army is moving in, Vargeist's dropping down on our crossbows, but our Reichsguard will counter them immediately. We're also going to immediately have to switch our gunners to try to target that black coach before it does too much damage. We do have our halberdiers out front, so hopefully they can keep a decent amount of the enemy back and busy while our uh, units that actually matter, as in the units that aren't summoned, uh, don't take as much damage. As we can see, the enemy graveguard are in uh, screwy formations and are being kept back by the mortars as we plan, so that at least is working out. Alrighty, Vargeists are dangerous, but let's hope that the uh, let's hope that the Reichsguard can take care of them. I do imagine that the hand gunners aren't so worried about the bats, um, especially with the uh, Reichsguard helping them out. But we still do need to be wary. Alrighty, and the bordermen firing across our lines or arcing their shots over our great swords. There, doing very nice damage to those enemy units of. Uh, uh, of skeletons. We also have the enemy doggos charging our halberdiers in the flanks here, but at least the halberdiers are holding A and B. That does mean that the doggos are not, in fact, charging our range units. Battle line is well and truly engaged now, pretty much everywhere. And Vlad, by the looks of it, has nearly defeated that enemy vampire who is now crumbling away. Over on this side, our Reichsguard have joined the fray and are in fact attacking the enemy dire doggos, which should speed up their deaths or their true deaths quite considerably, as compared to the other flank where the Reichsguard are too busy. Now Vlad is head- or not Vlad, uh, now uh, Karl is heading uh, Freudian Slip, calling him Vlad, the name of the true emperor, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, heading towards uh, Isabella, so he'll be having a little bit of a pseudo-duel here. Not so much a duel because we do have the Imperial Foot and the Sigmar Sons, uh, but nonetheless. She's very much in trouble and she has no Blood Chalice of Bathory to rely upon either. Our Reichsguard have finished up with the enemy Vargeists over on this flank and are now going after the enemy Direwolves, surrounding and destroying them and protecting the remnants of those Halberdiers. Great Swords obviously holding against the enemy... Uh, uh, the enemy me skeletons just fine no threat there as these guys just lack the armor piercing to go through the great swords otherwise the graveguard are still not at the battle lines being kept back continuously by both those mortars and additional damage from our hand gunners as well our crossbows as well as additional hand gunners have now switched to moving uh, th to the uh, targeting of this necromancer and we do want to get rid of the uh, corpse cart that he's riding around on as fast as possible as well or at the very least prevent it from buffing everybody up. Carl has also defeated Isabella and has now moved in together with his wizard to do a lad. Once again with the sun at his back. There we go, very nice. Absolutely glorious cinematic shots this time around. And all those crossbow bolts and bullets flying nearby as uh, Vlad's mount, Vlad and his mount tower, oh, or Vlad, damn it, <laughs> I keep calling Carl Vlad, uh, as Carl towers over Vlad who is now and disintegrating and is about to go. The rest of the battle is over, the rest of the army has crumbled away and now it's just time for Galmaraz to deliver the final blow. Should've, I wish that had happened on cue, but oh well. Alright, come on, and down goes Vlad. It actually looked like he dissipated, or he uh, disintegrated, but oh well. And actually, he's not the last on the field, but this one unit of Graveguard, which just could not reach our battle line. <laughs> oh, unfortunately for them. Uh, but there we go. It looks like that went fairly well for us. It says close victory, but I think that this is due to ammunition usage more than anything else. I don't think we took a lot of damage here. In fact, most of the damage would have been probably confined to that unit of Imperial Foot, but they didn't lose models so much as HP. And then, of course, the two units of halberdiers which both got charged uh, by those enemy dire doggos and of course due to their armor being lower than that of the great swords probably took considerable uh, extra damage look at those flying graveyard i wish you could hide the uh, hide the close victory screen because sometimes we get some really funny poses in the uh, in the end here but anyway uh, there we go a uh, nice battle let's see the damage and let's see if we get any items
Alrighty, not too bad. I did forget to give Carl back the Reichland Rune Fang, so the battle could have gone even better, but at uh, less than 10% losses. I think we're pretty darn okay. Looks like Emmanuel Posner and Isabella both survived there. The Black Coach and the Var guys did as well, and both of their units of Graveguard. Man, I feel like every time I fight against uh, uh, the AI when it's in control of vamps, it always gets its elite units surviving. I wish I had that kind of luck. Uh, we are obviously going to take the money. It's a fairly decent amount here. And I guess we're going to have to destroy the remnants of this army as well. Summon the Elector Counts. And ah, oh, don't tell me you're gonna move so far that we can't go back into encamp stance after. Though I have a feeling that you probably will. Hey, an apprentice wizard. Well, that's just swell. And undeath descendant hit points plus five percent. Huh? Did this always give you five percent hit points, or is that an SFO change? I feel like you only used to get wound recovery time and maybe something else. But five percent hit points always useful on Carl. In fact, because he's on deathclaw. Well, let's also take that military heritage level up. Uh, because he's on Deathclaw, he has quite a lot of HP to him, so it would be nice to get him to kill Throt the Unclean. And I think there's at least one other lord that provides extra 10... another... Uh, another HP buff, but damn me if I remember who it, ex it is exactly. Oh well. Uh, you. Take this out with a nod of resolve. Hopefully. Men, let's hope that the game doesn't scroll. So we had slow casualties. This is gonna, I swear, this is gonna hurt us more than the actual battle did. Mono one. But comparing to what we were facing off against, yeah, it sort of did. Uh, pound for pound. Alrighty, we are good to go. We got 5k or so out of that fight, and we can go back into encamp. So we are able to uh, hopefully hit Needling. I'm gonna hope that Eric here stands there so we can destroy his army as well. And hey, look, he's got some Sylvanian crossbowmen. Well, uh, they're going to be dead shortly as well. Anyway, I'm glad that we got that fight against Vlad. This will be the opening salvo in our fight against Sylvania. We got a lot of territory to conquer. Castle Drakenhof and Templehof should both uh, be uh, decent fortresses by now, Drakenhof especially. Um, but if we can take all of Sylvania, I'd be very glad of it. Also, I believe Sylvania gives us the Knights of Moor, doesn't it? Uh, Electric Counts. Impudent pop. Uh, Knights of Moor, Empire Knights. Yes, so that would be quite nice. It's kind of interesting that uh, they have the Knights of Moor added, but they don't have the Black Guard of Moor added, because you very well could add the Black Guard, and then you have a Moor-themed infantry set. And I feel like you could just reskin the Imperial Foot Knights and uh, give them more... Uh, uh, give them more stuff, and then they'll look exactly like the Black Guard of Moor, and then you're good. Not to be confused with the Black Guard of Nagaron. Completely different Black Guard. There's more than one Black Guard in Warhammer. <laughs> also, what is this? Uh, leadership on fighting undead. Gonna be fairly useless because we'll not be fighting undead very much after this. Wow, Stalberg's letter is probably the worst of the Electric Counts items, isn't it? No. It's just, it's just kind of terrible. I guess fighting against Bretonia if we move back to fight against Bretonia afterwards, but I guess it's really the, uh, the Knights of War that I want. Either way, unfortunately with that we're out of time, but uh, we got ourselves our cinematic battle. We defeated Vlad and we will be proceeding to fight Sylvania and next time around, plus whatever the heck happens with this little, uh, little army right here. Though once we're built up we just go after it with Bernhardt. So next episode, in addition to the fight against Vlad, we will be traveling with another full stack there, which should A, speed it up, but give more special units to uh, Carl's army, making him even more powerful. And then hopefully we take out the Blackstone Post and end this undead faction for good. Though, whether we attack now or wait, I'm still on the fence about, because we could continue sieging and build even more, uh, build even more siege towers if we want. We'll see about that next time, so stay tuned for more Empire as we continue to grow. Hopefully we'll be able to acquire our 10th Imperial Authority as well. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.